Jesus. Now, let me get into negative binomial regression model, a uh, commonly used count regression model in practice, more so than Poisson regression model. The Poisson regression model rarely fits in practice due to what is called over dispersion. And that's the reason why Poisson regression model are here, an acronym PRM, uh, quite often used as the baseline model to begin with. Okay? If the mean structure is correct, okay, but there is over dispersion, uh, a lot of times caused by excessive zeros uh, for the count response variables. Under that circumstance, PRM or Poisson regression model estimates are consistent. They're accurate ballpark, but inefficient, inefficient, okay? Uh, that is, their standard errors are biased downward resulting spuriously large Z values. That is, they're more likely to reject them now that the coefficients are equal to zero and the coefficients more likely to be statistically significant uh, than uh, they are uh, in reality. Uh, why would that happen? Well, in the Poisson regression model, uh, a major assumption is that the variance of y given x is equal to what well, the expected value that is the mean of, of that quantity. Okay. And the negative binomial regression adds a parameter. Okay, so to, to correct that issue, the negative binomial regression model adds a parameter that allows the variance, me, the variance of y given x is greater than the expectation of y given x. Okay, in this case is expectation of x beta. Okay, because in practice, variance of account often greater than the expectation of the count. So here, what the negative binomial regression model does is to add uh, parameters to count for what is called the unobserved heterogeneity. So in this case, additional source of randomness is added to the Poisson regression model. So in the Poisson regression model, we assume, you know, mu of i, that is the expected count is equal to the exponential function of xi multiplied by their corresponding coefficients, okay? In the negative binomial uh, regression model, in a negative binomial regression model, okay, instead of having just exponential function of x beta, we add randomness component, okay? a randomness component into the equation. So in this case, epsilon is a random error that is uncorrelated with x. So this epsilon, okay, this error term, disturbance term has to be uncorrelated with x. Okay? So what could that error term contain? Well, it could be the combined effects of variables incorrectly omitted from the model. Or it could be another source of pure randomness. Basically, it boils down to what? What is called unobserved heterogeneity. Unobserved heterogeneity. And this mu tilde here, and this mu i, they're related. They're related. That is mu i here is equal to mu tilde here, okay, is equal to mu multiplied by delta, right? Right, so this mu delta tilde, mu tilde is equal to the product of mu, right? And it's delta, it's delta, okay?
Well, uh, there is a bit of identification issue. In the linear regression model, we assume expectation of uh, epsilon i, that is error term, if you remember, uh, is equal to zero. That is the conditional mean is equal to zero, right? The expectation of this error term given x is equal to zero. And if we apply what is called, uh, uh, you know, um, iterated expectation, then the marginal expectation of that error term is also equal to zero. And we need a similar assumption for the negative binomial regression model. Otherwise, you know, uh, we cannot estimate that model. So that's called the ident identification assumption. Most conveniently, we we'll assume the expectation of that delta i is equal to one, and which implies that the expectation of mu tilde in our last slide is equal to the expectation of the product of mu, right? The mu without tilde directly from Poisson regression model, right? Multiplied by delta uh, is equal to, is equal to mu i. Why? Because here the expectation of delta is equal to one. And here, we also apply the assumption that, uh, you know, an X has uh, nothing to do, or X here is uncorrelated with delta. Then we can take mu i out of expectation right away. And here, if we assume delta follows a gamma distribution, then we can have expectation of delta equal to one and the variance of delta equal to one over uh, nu, okay, equal to alpha. And uh, mathematically, the negative binomial uh, probability density function results from solving this integral. Okay, pretty complicated form. And uh, if you're interested, you can check that out. Otherwise, just, uh, you know, with a reference. Okay. Like the Poisson regression model, uh, the expectation of uh, count, expected count given x is equal to mu, okay? Equal to mu. But its variance, for negative binomial model, the variance of count given x is mu multiplied by one plus mu over nu, parenthesis, which is greater than New. Most often, we present the formula in terms of dispersion parameter alpha equal to new uh, inverse or raised power of negative one. Okay. Then the variance of count y given x is equal to this number, which is greater than mu. Okay, so by design, okay, having additional parameter there, delta, right? Or alpha in this case, right? We kind of inflate the variance of count given X, accounting for uh, observed heterogeneity. And in most cases is excessive zeros. That is, if we observe, if we have a lot of zeros in the count re, uh, response variable, the more likely we're going to opt for a negative binomial regression model. In terms of interpretation, uh, in terms of interpretation, uh, here we can see that it's pretty straightforward. It's almost exactly the same as the interpretation for Poisson regression model, okay? Except that the variance, the conditional variance of count given X is inflated, which does not, in, uh, you know, gets into the interpretation of the results. So in terms of interpretation, almost identical, okay? Uh, between a uh, negative binomial regression model and Poisson regression model. So all the methods that I discussed uh, uh, in previous slides apply to negative binomial regression models. So how to estimate the model? 
Well, again, we're going to turn to likelihood function. So here, we're going to have a product of all the individual probabilities for the observed counts from individual cases, right? That is the probability of y i, that is observed count given x i. And then we're going to replace this uh, individual probability with uh, this quite complicated uh, probability density uh, function um, of negative binomial uh, um, probability density function. Okay, in this case, mu again is equal to exponential function of x beta. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a log of this likelihood function, and then we're gonna apply maximal likelihood estimation to solve for the beta, okay? As well as other, what is called auxiliary parameters. You know, parameters that are useful for uh, identification and uh, other uh, instrumental uh, purposes. Uh, at the same time, we can figure out the beta coefficients. Okay.